class, welcome to my channel and welcome to this new normal class. Today, I will be your teacher and we are going to discuss functions. First lesson will be representing real life situations using a function. But first, let us define what is function. A function is a relation where each element in the domain is related to only one value in the range. A domain is defined as a set of x values, while the range is defined as the set of y values. Function is a set of ordered pairs in which one input produces one output. It says there that the functions is a relation. What is a relation? Well, the relation is a rule that relates values from a set of values to another set of values or the second set of values, or we have the domain and the range. So also the, the relation can be represented as an ordered pair. So it's denoted as x comma y. So let us have examples. So we have here the first table. So we have x values and the y values. For x values, we have 2, negative 1, 6, and 8. So each x values, it has a corresponding y values. For 2, you have negative 3, negative 1, we have 1, 6, we have 4, and 8, we have 3. So this table is an example of a function. Another example, we have this table. X values are negative 4, another negative 4, 5, and 2. So it has a corresponding Y values. We have 1, 0, 3, and negative 1. So this example is not a function. Why? Because this x value, negative 4, it has a corresponding two y values, which are 1 and 0. So we have different ways of writing a relation. What are those? First, we have listing of ordered pairs. So example, we have 4, 7. 2, 13, negative 1, 0, 6, 3.1. So these ordered pairs are example of a function because each element in your x corresponds to a set of y, and a value of y. Another example, we have negative 3, 11, 8 comma 5 negative 3 comma 2 and 0 comma 4 so as you can see we have negative 3 that corresponds to two values of your y so which are 11 and 2 so this example is not a function Another way of writing a relation is a mapping. So we can draw a circle or an oval, two circle for, um, one circle for the input and one circle for the output. So we can write here your inputs and outputs are your x and y. So the, the arrow means that your tree is related to green or the green corresponds to 3. So 6 related to yellow, 9 related to violet, and 12 related to red. Another way of writing a relation is the table of values. So this example is already seen in the first part. So we have the set of X and set of Y. Another way or the last way to write a relation, we have the graph. So, we can have this graph 
So this graph came from this function. So this function of x equals to x squared. So how can we get this graph? graph? So by getting a certain values given for your uh, x, so we can have a f of x. So by substituting that x to your function. So negative 2 squared is equals to 4. Negative 1 squared is equals to 1. 0 squared is equals to 0. 1 squared is equals to 1. And 2 squared is equals to 4. So by plotting these values, these ordered pairs, into the Cartesian plane, we can form this graph, which is a parabola. Class, we need to remember. Also take note. Observe keenly the x coordinates, so that is the domain. If an element in the domain is related to more than one element in the range, then that relation is not a function. So remember that. So let's have define vertical line test. So Vertical line test is drawing a vertical line to a given graph. So, if that line passes through only one point in your graph, the meaning that graph or the relation in that graph is a function. If it passes through many points or through more than one point, meaning that is not a function. So let's have this illustration. So this illustration, we have red lines. These red lines are your vertical lines that uh, helps you to test if it's either a function or not a function. So this is your graph. So this example graph is an example of a function because these vertical lines, those red lines, just touches one point in the graph. So this point, this point, this point, and this point. So let's have another example. So this graph is a function. Why? Because it only touches one point. This dashed line only touches one point. Another example, we have this graph. So, this dashed line, red line, is for your vertical test, and it only touches one point also. So, it's a function. Third graph, we have this parabola opening in the left side. So, if we draw a vertical line or this uh, dashed line, we can see that this uh, dashed line... Uh, passes through two points. So we have one, one and two. So this means that this is not this is not a function. Last we have this graph. So this line is also not a function. Why? Because it touches three points. So we have one, two, three. So this vertical line touches three points. So that means this is not a function. So let's have real life situations using a function. Examples. First, we have each student has a corresponding LRN or the learner's reference number. So each one of you has a unique combination of learner's re reference number or LRN. That means that is a function. Another example. Each vehicle has a corresponding plate number. So those vehicles, either um, it's either a bus, a taxi, or a private vehicle, or a jeepney, it has a specific uh, unique plate number that is registered from an, from an agency or the LTO. Last, we have... Each household electric bill or your Meralco bill has a corresponding amount of consumption. So each, uh, as you can see here in this uh, in this picture, we have a Meralco bills. Uh, we have two 
So each bill, each Meralco bill, electric bill correspond a corresponds an amount of consumption. So yeah. There is this type of function which is what we call piecewise function. So it is defined as a function on a sequence of intervals. So in this function, you will see different types of intervals. So it is it can be more than two, two or more intervals. Example, this f of x is equals to 3x plus 5 if the x is from negative 3 to negative 1. So meaning the x is greater than or equal to negative 3 and less than or equal to negative 1. So f of x is equals to 2 if the value of x is greater than or equal to negative 1 and less than the 3. The f of x is equals to negative x plus 2 if the x is greater than or equal to 3 and less than or equal to 4. Let us represent this in a graph. So this is the graph. As we can see, the intervals of the graph is from negative 3 to negative 1. So this first function and from negative 1 to positive 3, this line, and from 3 to positive 4. So this line uh, with a positive slope represents the f of x which is equal to 3x plus 5. So if we are going to substitute negative 3 to your x, the value will be 3 times negative 3 plus 5 that is equals to f of x which is negative 4. So this value, negative 4. If the value is in between to negative 3 and negative 1 which is negative 2, this one your x. So let's substitute negative 2 as your x. 3 times negative 2 plus 5 that is equals to negative 1. So your f of x is negative 1. If we substitute negative 1 as your x to this function, we have 3 times negative 1, which is negative 3, plus 5, which is positive 2. So, this is your f of x. So, for the second interval from negative 1 to positive 3, so we have the value of your f of x, which is equals to positive 2. So, the notation of the shaded dot means that this value of x is included as your solution while this unshaded dot this means that this value of x which is 3 is not included to the solution last for this uh, function negative x plus 2 this is the graph so from 3 to 4 if we substitute 3 so we have negative 3 plus 2 that is f of x equals to negative 1. If we substitute 4, negative 4 plus 2, that is equals to negative 2. So that's it for the piecewise functions. For the real life situations using a piecewise functions, you can watch the next video.